Hey everyone, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. Benedetto artist, uh, Sunnyside Records artist, got uh, Live at National Sawdust, my latest record, and uh, it's my improv book from Mel Bay, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, and a uh, shout out to Jazz Guitar Today for uh, collaborating with me on these videos to get them out to the world. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Today I want to talk about the tune Joshua. Uh, Victor Feldman's song, uh, recorded by Miles Davis, in uh, I guess '63 on Seven Steps to Heaven, and then it's the uh, the live Four and More concert, 1964, with George Coleman, uh, Herbie, and Ron Carter, Tony Williams. Um, also, 19 early '90s, the Joe Henderson record, So Near So Far, really probably my favorite version, if I dare say, <laughs> with John Schofield and Al Foster and Dave Holland and Joe Henderson. Just some of the best uh, Schofield, in my opinion, out there. Um, and this tune, uh, I have a long history with it, as I do with many of these uh, jazz standards. Uh, I remember when I was an undergrad here at UNT, uh, Fred Hamilton, who was my teacher and you know predecessor in this position, uh, he did an improv class, which I now teach, um, where the uh, sort of the textbook for the class, or we, we covered all the tunes on the, the 64 concert, the My Funny Valentine with, the ba with all the ballads, and Four and More with the up-tempo tunes. And I remember being really excited to take this class, because, you know, that's one of my favorite albums in the entire jazz uh, discography. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, I know all those tunes, you know, standards, even the fast stuff, okay, I gotta play fast, but I know Four, and I know Seven Steps to Heaven, and I sort of neglected uh, Joshua. I was like, oh yeah, there's that other song. And I remember coming to class one day and we were playing Joshua and man, just getting, uh, how should I say, getting housed maybe is one way to put it. Um, it's just a really challenging tune. I mean, there's the tempo issue, but also it's an early example of like mixed meter. I mean, there's no fives or sevens, but the bridge, uh, the head is a little different, uh, the melody, but the solo form, you get this interesting, the A sections are 12 bars, mostly D minor, although there's a turnaround. It's eight bars of D minor, and then uh, the following four bars are always D minor, C minor, B flat minor, C minor, D minor. And then two more bars of D minor. And then when you get to the bridge, so, uh, you know, you do that, and then the second inning you have like a 2-5 to F, and then suddenly you're in 3-4, and uh, you're in 3, and then there's a, there's a, six measure phrase, I guess it's six bars of three, so it goes one, two, three, F minor, B flat, E flat, E flat minor, A flat, D flat, G seven, and then four again, C minor, B flat minor, E seven, D seven. So you have six bars of three, two bars of four. That's the bridge, <coughs> excuse me, but it happens three times. So you have the form is A, A, B, 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 A, where the A's are 12 bars and the bridge is six bars of three and two bars of four. Um, and yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. Um, so in the years since then, I've, I've tried to you know, dust off this tune, teach it to my students, and we did it in uh, improv uh, this semester. But yeah, like I said, uh, that 1964 concert, um, everybody sounds amazing on that, that record, but particularly George Coleman, when he comes in uh, after Miles, it's a really epic solo. I never transcribed it. I should probably do that. I was looking on YouTube to see if anyone had done the work for me. They didn't, but I listened to some of it, you know, slowed down so I could kind of hear what he was doing. One thing that I found is kind of interesting on the, the D minor part, he plays all different kinds of minor. You know, I didn't dissect it under the microscope, but I, I heard some stuff where it kind of melodic minor stuff. I heard other stuff where he was playing sort of harmonic minor. I heard stuff that was just natural minor. And I heard Dorian in there, some minor pentatonic, just kind of a whole uh, menu of, of D minor options. And then, uh, interesting thing too is, you know, that turnaround, uh, I noticed with a lot of people playing on this song and in my own playing, sort of a question of like, how literally do you want to treat that? Do you want to play over D minor, C minor, B flat minor, C minor every time and play some language like... What you could do. Sometimes when you when you do that and you take it too literally, um, I don't know. I don't have a totally uh, settled opinion on this, but I do know that sometimes I, I feel like I should 
approximate and generalize over that harmony, and sometimes I feel like I should play uh, play it all. But I find with with the George Coleman too, he sort of ends up on you know with all this different forms of minor he's playing through this part. He kind of ends up on an E flat, so he'll be playing. crude approximation of his <laughs> amazing stuff that he plays. But it seems like E flat is kind of the note that makes it sort of D minor and then not D minor and then D minor again. And sort of that E flat in the same way that maybe like Night in Tunisia has that 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 E flat that comes in there. Um, another way to think about it too I suppose is uh, both uh, well B flat minor um, we can think of uh, you know in jazz, we often talk about like the super Locrian scale when you have an A7 playing B flat uh, minor up a half step that has kind of a dominant function going back to D minor. So if you're playing. You kind of hear how that's like D minor, sort of five, uh, and then back to D minor. And the C minor, too, you know, kind of has an E flat triad in there. It does have an E flat triad in there. So you kind of have, yeah, like D minor, <laughs> dominant D minor. Um, and it's interesting to hear Joe Henderson, he's, he's less, uh, he's, I don't want to say vague, but he kind of just, like I said, it's D minor, not D minor, D minor, not D minor. And that's kind of the way I think about it when I'm playing over this tune. It's also a good opportunity, given how specific the bridge is, as we'll see in a second, uh, to kind of generalize a bit, maybe do some side slipping, you know, play some D minor. <laughs> Honestly, letting my fingers wander a little bit away from D minor, and then get getting back there. Um, and sometimes when uh, when the stars align, it, it sounds good. But uh, yeah, so that's the A sections. The bridge, like I said, it's uh, six bars of three, two bars of four. Um, so it's, it's eight bars. But you get F major, and then a two, five to E flat, and a two, five to D flat, and a G seven, and then C minor, B flat minor, kind of E seven altered, A seven. And uh, you know, the first part of that I can kind of um, makes a lot of sense to me. I can just go. You know, I can just play over those chords, very uh, sort of boppish. Um, if I can make the transition to 3-4, which I had to practice a bit to not get thrown off by that. And I found, like, it, it, you end up in C minor, you know, the C minor, B flat minor, E7, A7, and then going back to F after that to do the bridge three times. It's a little bit awkward. And I remember listening to what Schofield plays over that, kind of trying to figure out <laughs> what I should do. And I noticed a lot of the time, I forget how many courses he takes, but when he gets to that C minor part, he almost kind of plays, like, C blues or something that just kind of C minor uh, and finds his way without maybe worrying too much about those other chords. Um, and that sounds pretty good. I guess in a certain sense, I'll outline, sometimes I'll outline the E7 to A7, but particularly when the bridge is over and I'm going back to D minor, that seems like a good place to be. Since that's a 2-5 in, uh, in D minor. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's uh, the challenge of this tune, the challenges include the tempo, the mixed meter thing, and also uh, trying to decide whether how specific you want to be on all the chords, like when you want to generalize and when you want to really be literal. Um, another thing that's kind of fun, I was listening to the George Coleman solo, it gets so fast that at one point, you know, uh, on the bridge, Ron Carter, instead of going like, uh, you know, they're in and four, so it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Instead of going like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, he plays uh, through the bridge. <laughs> he starts just playing half notes. Um, so you get. Uh, he plays 13 half notes, which take you through those measures, right? Because you have six bars of three. Let's see if I can do this math. Six bars of three, that's 18 quarter notes and then two bars of four, 
Uh, so you got 26 quarter notes. So if you play 13 half notes kind of over the bar line, um, it works out and it's pretty killer. So go back and listen to uh, everybody. George Coleman, 1964 concert, uh, Joshua, and also uh, Schofield with uh, Joe Henderson record, So Near So Far, and every other version of this tune. I'm sure there's some more great versions out there. But uh, I'm going to try to play on it a little bit and uh, yeah, check out some of these, uh, these ideas. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 